Good afternoon. Um, today, what I want to do is walk through a concept that's fairly easy, but it can be kind of complicated to set up in the system. And this is deals with receipt accruals. Um, in Oracle costing receipts are accrued. You can set it up to re to accrue the receipt in the accounts payable uh, when it is received into inventory. You can also set it up to not accrue, and then you can run a process each month. But I would recommend an automated accrual because they don't have to worry about it. But the automated accruals, these are not reversed each month. In classic um, accounting, we would accrue our invoice receipts at the end of the each month. We would reverse them out the following month. And so what Oracle has done is they've got rid of that process. So accruals are done PO line by PO line upon receipt. And then when the invoices come in and through the matching process, those, are re those accruals will be reversed. Um, for receipts that are not inventory related, um, uh, product services, et cetera, you can accrue those. You can run a process called create an invoice receipt accruals at the end of each month. It's on the task menu. And you can accrue those re those invoices where a receipt hasn't been done. But what happens through this process, some of the classic problems in, in costing is the balance that's in the uninvoiced receipt general ledger account. And how do you deal with that? Or again, Oracle deals with PO line by PO line. They're matched there. Um, and then the accrual goes away. But sometimes you have these dangling amounts sitting in that uninvoiced receipt account. And that can be because um, a different quantity was received or the pricing might have been a little bit different when the invoice came in, et cetera. And so now we're left with the problem of how do we clear those out? And so in Oracle, there's two different ways to do this. There's the manual process and then there's a more automated process. So I'll walk through uh, both of those today. So let's first go into the system, and I'm logged in here as a cost accounting manager. This is a standard um, landing page. But first, let's go take a look at what's out here in, um, in the accrues. So we're going to go ahead and put in our business unit. And you can run this open. You can do it based on aging. But I'm going to narrow it down to a specific um, vendor. just to kind of keep it relatively short and then click search. Um, I'm also going to sort this by PO uh, in descending order so I can have the newest stuff on top. So here you can see that we have um, several POs. We have accrual amounts that are in here. We can get the item prices, et cetera, and there's more information along to the side. So the question is, What's happened is these um, items have been received, the invoices come in, it's been posted, and then we have these dangling amounts that are sitting here that will sit here until they're cleared out. So to clear them out manually is really quite simple. Uh, you can select a line, go up here to actions, adjust balances, gives a write-off amount, and you can say uh, write-off. Received inventory. So this came in, um, it was one unit short, et cetera. So I can write this off. Now, these are going to be also the ability to do this is based on security. Um, so just know that. And so we're just going to click OK. And it's going to come up and tell me that this has been adjusted. And then over here on this tab, the adjust accruals balance tab, I can go in and I can see what's, what these accruals um, adjustments have been. So again, we're going to put in US1 business unit search. And then here's the, the items that have been adjusted off. Here's the $38 item that we did earlier. So it's been written off. And down here, you can see all the accounting that's associated with that. So that's the manual way to do this. The automated way, while the processing is much simpler, the setup is a little bit more complex. So the first thing you have to do to do these automated write-offs is you have to create the accrual rules. Accrual rules are um, you know, telling the system basically what's going to happen, and they're written in if-then statements. 
And you can have several rules doing different things. You can say, okay, in this case, what I've set up is a rule. If the PO is open, which means, hey, I have a dangling receipt out there that I'm not going to get. If the, um, if the amount is less than $1,000 and it's less than 10% of the invoice amount, hey, write it off, right? Because if it's over $1,000, maybe I want to look at that and do something different. Um, I can set this up to say, hey, appeals over 30 days old. Um, revert, you know, charge off the accruals. There's a lot of different ways that I can set up these rules. Um, and I'll put in the PowerPoint down below um, some of the um, verbs and and the attributes that you can use to define that. So we've set up this rule and to really set it up, you just click in this box, you create, you're gonna create a rule. It can be a general rule, it can be a decision table. These are just general rules. I like general rules because they're simple. Um, and then I create my if statement, right? So I can come down here and I can say it's gonna be a simple test. I can add multiple lines as you see. And so I'm gonna say invoice, let's see if I can get the invoice age. So here's my invoice age. If I were to add this in, I can put invoice age is more than, let's say 30 days. And so what this rule would say is if the invoice is open, if the amount that clears less than $1,000, if it's under 10% of the invoice amount, and if it's more than 30 days, then the, the, the then statement, then the then statement down here, yeah, is to clear the account. Um, then you would validate this rule. And if there's no errors found down here, um, then you can go ahead and save and close. I'm not going to save and close this because I don't have any invoices out there that are uh, more than 30 days old that I want to um, dink with. So we're going to go ahead and just cancel out of this. And so the next step, once we have the rule set up, is that um, we're going to go ahead and run that rule. And so to do that, we go through um, match receipt accruals, and this should kick off a process in the background. So this is going to be US-1 business unit. I'm going to say I want to do everything for this month today. I told you it through tomorrow. And we'll go ahead and submit this. And this is going to kick off a process in the background that's going to go execute that rule against all of the outstanding accruals that, that we have. And if you're curious if it's run, we can come over here and obviously take a look at it. It doesn't take very long to run if you do this on a regular basis. Um, so we'll let this finish. There we go. It'll finish up here in a minute. Okay, so we'll go back over to receipt accounting. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but my write-off amount is now increased because it found some items to write off. We can go back over here to adjust receipt accruals. We can come over here into um, this tab to take a look at what got accrued or what got written off, I'm sorry, in my business unit. And um, so we have added lines in here. So again, the process manually is fairly simple. You come in to um, adjust accrual balances. You search on what you want to accrue. And all of them. Supplies. Really? And starts with, I don't know why that didn't like it. Hmm. 
and you can see the items that need to be accrued to write one off manually is just simply actions, adjust balances, give a reason. And go ahead and click OK, and that'll write it off. The other option is to um, create your rules through manage clearing rules and then run a process on a periodic basis um, to write them on. And again, we can go ahead and um, So um, I will put a PowerPoint down below that outlines the steps and some of the attributes that are involved in the rulemaking. Um, again, thank you for your time and have a great day.